A reading from the book of the prophet Haggai. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai. Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people say the time has not yet come to rebuild the Lord's house. Then the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai, saying, Is it a time for you yourselves to live in your paneled houses, while this house lies in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider how you have fared. You have sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And you that earn wages, earn wages to put them into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider how you have fared. Go up to the hills and bring wood and build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is, the Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song, his praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker, and let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the humble with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is glory for all his faithful ones. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the ruler heard about all that Jesus had done. He was perplexed because it was said by some that John had been raised from the dead, by some that Elijah had appeared, and by others that one of the ancient prophets had arisen. Herod said, John I beheaded, but who is this whom I hear such things? Herod tried to see Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the great feast of St. Venceslaus, and normally we'd know him uh, from the famous Christmas hymn, Good Old King Venceslaus. And it's interesting because I want to get into that hymn today and specifically how it relates to the readings because it almost fits in quite perfectly, almost providential, if you will. St. Venceslas was a duke uh, living in Bohemia in about the 10th century. And he was actually a fairly uh, normal guy, if you will. Um, Married, had kids, was sort of a minor official, but because of his virtue, because of his great uh, ability to want to stand up for Christ and for for virtue and for value. He stood out and he he sort of grew in the Bohemian kind of world uh, and later became kind of elevated. Um, But going back to the hymn that we sing about him, uh, usually around Christmas, we might wonder, well, here we are in September, why are we sort of singing about St. Venceslas over in December? And this goes back to, indeed, uh, a story about him that's contained in the song itself, that on the Feast of Stephen, and the feast day of St. Stephen is right after Christmas, and St. Stephen is what we call the proto-martyr, the first martyr, the person, first person that died for Jesus. And it's always celebrated on that day, not only because he died on that day, but it's a reminder that though Jesus is born, it's only through being uh, through dying to ourselves, dying to the world, that we're, we're born again. And so right after the birth of God here on earth, we have the death of the first martyr. And I don't know about you, right after Christmas, we got all our Christmas presents, we're very stuffed. That would have happened in 10th century Bohemia too. A lot of us are sleeping on Boxing Day or St. Stephen's Day, but uh, good old King 
or rather Duke, uh, St. Venceslaus goes out and he thinks about who he can help. Uh, if he can help uh, those who are disadvantaged, help the poor. I just want to read, uh, I want to read the, the final uh, verse of this hymn that often isn't sung during Christmas, but I think it's the most important. It really sums up who he is. It says, therefore, Christian men be sure, wealth or rank possessing, ye who now will bless the poor shall find yourselves blessing. And indeed, that's what he did. He gave his whole life for others, his whole life uh, to uh, his nation and to his people. However, we see exactly the opposite in our readings. And Haggai, the prophet, is rightly uh, condemning the people of God because their houses have all been built up. In fact, the word actually used here is palaces. They've created palaces for themselves. And yet the temple of God, the place of the, the old sacraments, as St. Thomas Aquinas calls them, the sacrifices and all that went on in the old temple, it's in shambles because they're focused on themselves. The opposite of St. Venceslaus, who after sort of being stuffed with Christmas turkey or whatever the 10th century Bohemian equivalent of that is, uh, goes out and helps the poor, goes out and uh, we also know he goes to Mass the next day, too. Uh, he's, not, uh, he's not tired of helping and praising God. And, and, uh, and then we have this beautiful, uh, what it's said so beautifully by the Lord. It says, Consider now how you fared. You've sown much and harvested little. You eat, but you never have enough. You drink, but you never have your fill. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And you earn wages, earn wages, put them into a bag of holes. Indeed, that's what we will happen with our lives if we're just leaving it for ourselves. If we're not leaving it for God, if we're not living it for uh, the disadvantaged, either spiritually or materially, that need our help. And then we have our gospel very clearly, and it's, it's, all, it's quite an ominous gospel, but we know that Herod is hearing all the things that are going on in the gospel. And what do we read in the gospel? I mean, people that actually pick it up and, and read it verse for verse, chapter by chapter, as Pope Francis asks us to all do at least once a year, read one of the Gospels verse for verse to read the, the whole narrative. It's healing after healing after healing, giving, giving, all the while the danger for Christ increases eventually uh, to the pinnacle of the cross. And that's what happens with St. Venceslaus. He just lives his life as a, as a good Christian man and eventually uh, he dies uh, from another political rival, but it's because of his uh, good policies, his good things he did in his life. But as uh, this hymn also says that he dies on St. Stephen's Day, we know also the destiny of St. Stephen and St. Venceslaus who pray for us, uh, that though their death came by, by evil means, uh, they are indeed alive. And thus might we never be not brave to do the same.